prepare yourselves for a battle of epic proportions between two titans. Feast upon their voices and revel in their words. This is Dueling Ogres. and welcome to episode 122 thank you for joining us as always on this optical to sunday afternoon earth date august 6th 2017 i'm your host remington hitchcock and with me as always is my i gotta wait for my lower third to come in there it is yeah there it is over there what we're doing video to this week and this is my co-host brandon full say hello brandon Y'all, you're not you're not gonna say <laughs> hi to the people who are no, listening. I was waving for the video listeners. Oh, that wait. the audio listeners can fuck off. Wait, the video listeners? You know what I meant. You mean the video watchers? I think history will prove me correct. The video listeners and the audio watchers. Yes, that's that's what we've got going on. The t- times they are changing, Remington. <laughs> yeah, verbs and adverbs are different. Adjectives. Cats and dogs and sleeping together. It's cats Adjectives and dogs and adverbs. living together. I always thought he was talking about just cats and dogs really boning down. No, no. Cats and oh. dogs living together, mass hysteria. Ghostbusters took on an entirely different meaning to me as a kid. Uh, apparently, you are a yeah. uh, sick <laughs> and twisted individual. I loved Ghostbusters, but I thought it really took me out of the movie, that part where he just... <laughs> Talks about how he wants to see cats and dogs fuck. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it really a... made it more relatable. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> nope, can't get down with that. <laughs> so, what have you been up to? It feels like it was just yesterday that we recorded. Honestly, see, for me, it feels like forever. Really, that we recorded. Yeah. Man. I think because I just value our friendship so much that just not seeing you for even a week feels like way longer. See, I, I'm the opposite. I hate you. So mm-hmm. yeah. the longer it is, the longer I feel like I'm relieved to not be in your presence. Okay. Mm-hmm. And that's why you're having me do video this week from my apartment. That's right. Instead of being at your house. I can't stand you being here. I actually came by earlier and you had the door locked. Yeah. And I kept knocking. And then Uh I swear I saw you peek out through the curtains. No, that was And you weren't even trying to hide it. That was a cat. A cat wearing a Deadpool shirt. Yes. With a goatee. Hey. And and headphones on editing a podcast. Nice shirt. (laughs) Is what it says. Hey, nice shirt down at the bottom. I'm not going to take my shirt off for you, but. That would we'll be. We'll work into that. That would be weird. Yeah, I need to go. It's it's tough adjusting your clothes in a webcam <laughs> because it's backwards. No, still left shoulder. Uh, it, it it depends. It depends on the. It's webcam. literally can... just like looking in a mirror. I no, it's not. See, uh, already our podcast is just being destroyed because we have video cameras in front of us. <laughs> this is true. I have the two audio listeners hands. are going to have no idea. I have two right hands. I have two left hands. I have two right hands. <laughs> okay, so what you, have I been up you to? you got to watch the videos. <laughs> you have to. No, what we need is for them to download it and give us likes on iTunes. We need That's both. more important than YouTube. We need both. We need both to intermingle and fuck like cats and dogs. <laughs> see we've come full circle yeah i like it that was a good call back from two minutes ago perfect <laughs> that's right so brandon 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 what have you been up to so i have been playing a 3ds game i've still been playing pokemon some but i bought this other game i was playing it last week too but i didn't want to go and talk about a whole bunch of different stuff i was playing yeah it's are you familiar with the Mies on nintendo like the little the little like the little character of you yeah, the little avatar you made starting with the Wii. Yeah, yeah. Well, this is a game called Miitopia. 
Okay. And it's a turn-based RPG where all of the characters are characters that you've created. Okay. So you use your me's as your characters. Okay, that sounds cool. <clears throat> yeah, it's actually pretty cool. So for my first party, I had myself as the mage, you as a pop star, my daughter as a thief, and Drew Carey as a cleric. Okay. <laughs> but, it, like, the game is so stupid, and I can't stop playing it, because 90% of it you just put on auto. Like, there's an auto battle feature yeah. where you go into combat, and the, the computer just does it for you. But every character you meet is populated either with a character that you've made yourself, you can choose, or you can go onto the Nintendo store and pick characters that other people have made. Okay. Which is where I found Drew Carey. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. So, like, you have, there's, like, princesses and princes and kings and the evil big bad guy. All of them you can pick who they, who you want them to be. And it's done like a, a like a casting call, and then you get to pick them. It's super typical Nintendo weirdness, right. and I can't stop. I can't stop playing it. <laughs> it's so fucking adorable. Like the gameplay is almost non-existent. It's almost like you're just watching something with very minimal interactions. Yeah, most of your interaction is when your party goes to the inn, and you get to choose who sleeps in what room to develop their relationships. And you get to feed them things you found during your journey and you find out what foods they like and dislike. <laughs> okay. Yeah. yeah, it's so fucking stupid. It is so stupid, but seriously, it is it's adorable. I, I have been watching um off and on. I've only watched a couple of them, but I've been watching uh Jack uh -huh. play uh coffee shop tycoon. Okay. And I want to play it so bad. <laughs> Like is that the one where you're not the one where you're in space, right? You no, can that's get it, soup. You can get it on Steam for like six bucks and it's a beta. It's an early access. Um, okay. So and and I apologize, listeners. Um I, I may be able to filter out some of it, but I, I have to turn the fan back on. It's on low, but it's it's <laughs> it's right next to my case sucking the heat out. So so every time I've been at your house, you refuse to turn the fan on because of the noise. And yes. now that you're by yourself, you're like, oh, time to turn the fan on. Let's get real fucking comfortable in here. It's no, I'm, I'm sucking the heat out of my computer because four times more things are going to heat up the computer. Coffee shop tycoon does not look good. Like it, graphics it, wise. It doesn't. But I tell you, I, 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 I'm watching him play it and I'm just, I'm watching him, like, you have three different metrics that you have to keep track of. You have to keep track of whether your coffee is made or not, whether you have coffee to uh, to to sell to people, and whether you have food to sell to people if you offer food at your coffee shop. Okay. And I just constantly see him running out of food, and it drives me fucking nuts. I want to play <laughs> it so I can play it better than him. <laughs> I think Tycoon Games would be up your alley because you're such a fucking micromanager. Yeah. That I think you'd excel at Tycoon Games. I, I played a lot of Roller Coaster Tycoon when I was younger. Um, I'm not a big Sims fan, though. Like, I don't care yeah, for The Sims. The Sims is too much. Yeah. I let just like to, I like to build them into a room and take away the door and let them fucking sweat it out until they die. Yeah, as like everybody who plays The Sims does. Yeah, yeah. Immediately just goes into murdering. Exactly. Okay. This is what happens when you get... Oh, you're sharing your can you screen. Can you see my screen? I, I can. I okay, can so I want to go ahead and pull up... Will this be on the video? Yes. The me sharing the screen and showing what the screen is? Yep. Yes, it will. Okay. I didn't know it would do this, but that's what's happening. I Hell can yeah. see your desktop... And so can everybody else. So I have. <laughs> okay. Okay. I have nothing secret on there. Okay. I was making sure that I didn't have like <laughs> password XLQR. Because, <laughs> you know, the nine people who are going to watch this video are going to get into my stuff. Yeah. Okay. So here's a couple pictures from this. Okay. This is the first one I took. You can take screenshots in the game too. Okay. This is me and you. Uh-huh. 
Can you zoom in on it a little bit? Because it's going to be small on their screen. There you go. Okay. Very nice. I had my daughter help us help me design you. So, so you, <laughs> I guess you. I guess I'm not the wizard. No, I, <laughs> you're the pop star. So uh -huh. you always wear suspenders and fedoras. Like, and do I you, have uh, a? Do I have a? <laughs> the eye is that from uh, a Clockwork Orange? Is that a Clockwork Orange eye? Yeah, but you have it on both eyes. Oh, okay. So it's just it's um, serendipitous that you just got it at that right angle. Yeah. Gotcha. So then as you stay in different rooms, you develop relationships with people. And the higher your relationship is, the more you help each other in battle. So like once you're yeah. you like another person, when they go to attack, sometimes you'll run over and boost their attack. Okay. Or you'll show off for somebody you like. Gotcha. But it starts to get once you put people in different rooms with each other and build their relationships up, people start to get jealous. So I started because I have my daughter in there, so I always room her with me, so I'd have the highest relationship with her. So right. you and Drew, you and Drew Carey became fucking thick as thieves. You guys were so tight. Yeah. Well, I finally swapped it over because I realized Rim's my best friend. I should probably have a higher acquaintance with him. Yeah. So then my daughter was rooming with Drew Carey and got a random cutscene where she gave him a gift. Okay. And then it showed this cutscene, and then it cut to this. Let me zoom in here. It says, uh-oh, Rim likes Drew Carey and saw it all. And you're peeking in, <laughs> sadly, through the window where she just gave him a gift. <laughs> oh, that's And then the one more. Thing. I have a travel traveling sage, and my traveling sage is Ice Cube. <laughs> that is awesome. <laughs> That was, um, I hit the second part of the game and you change your class and my daughter wanted me to change my class to cat. Okay. So I'm no longer a mage. I have like a cat costume and all of my attacks are like sharpening my claws and petting my ears and stuff. <laughs> yeah, like I said, the game is so fucking stupid, yeah. but it's just, I'm really enjoying playing it. <laughs> That's hilarious. Yeah. Um, that's so weird oh no drew mm. <laughs> i thought you were my friend <laughs> oh yeah like you guys were so close you were buying each other gifts all the time yeah like there there's little cut scenes like interstitials when you're walking through the map and like you trip and then drew carey comes over and like slowly helps you up and you guys just like lock eyes and little hearts pop above your head. And you're like, thanks, Drew. You're my best friend. And he's like, that's what friends are for. <laughs> and I don't have a screenshot of Drew Carey right now. I'm not going to dig for it. Yeah. But it is fucking spot on. Right. <laughs> Besides my my giant love for Drew Carey and the Drew Carey show, I picked it because it was the greatest. It was the closest approximation outside of Ice Cube. <laughs> see you need to grab the screenshot for me and then i'll just i'll work it into the uh to the th the post thumbnail so i'll just put like you know how i do the post thumbnail it ha has the episode name and stuff on it yeah so you find that and send that over to me and i'll i'll drop that into our little episode thumbnail okay here i'll uh One more time here. Am I sharing screen again? Um, wait, wait, wait. Oh, there we go. Okay. So this was a celebration scene I took. I was a mage. You're there happy. That's my daughter is the thief. And you can't really see him. It's not great, but that's Drew Carey crying in the background. What, why is he crying? Uh, because the princess and her true love just got married and it's a time for celebration and Drew Carey is apparently very sentimental. Oh, that's, that makes a lot of sense. He really is. Yeah. Yeah. He's a, he's a good, good man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait, here's. Oh, oh. 
I know this is riveting audio. Yeah. Uh, that's you guys staying in the room together, and he cleans the floor while you watch. <laughs> Slow and steady, Drew Carey says. <laughs> Slow and steady. See, this kind of works for the listeners, because now they can paint their own picture. <laughs> yeah. Just imagine famous oh. funny man Drew Carey scrubbing a floor intently wearing robes while Remington in a fedora and an open chested vest watches smiling yeah <laughs> good stuff <laughs> quality listening <laughs> so what about you remington outside of traveling with drew carey what have you been up to um let's see here for breakfast i had a honey bun peanut butter jelly sandwich yeah would you say that that's the best moment in your life or the worst moment in your life i would say honestly neither <laughs> <laughs> just another day just but, another manic monday for remington yeah yep that's exactly it just another manic monday i woke up and i just i was talking to you this morning on on messenger and i it suddenly popped into my head that you like to have cereal like for breakfast and dinner every day mm -hmm. and Love cereal yeah and i was like oh man i really want some cereal and i was like shit i don't have any cereal i have milk <laughs> But I don't have cereal. So I go downstairs and I'm bebopping around and I'm trying to see what, uh, yes, bebopping around. Okay. Oh, yeah, continue. I'm sorry. I just. <laughs> but I, I'm, I'm bebopping around and I'm looking around, see what I can have for breakfast. And uh, can I say real quick that bebopping, without an exaggeration, is legitimately how you go through about half your day? <laughs> yeah. Like that's a super apt description because I'm sure you were dancing a little bit, singing. Yeah, yeah, probably. Like you're a be you're a bebopping guy. Yeah, I just I'd bebop around. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I, I I say, oh, you know what else sounds good? A peanut butter jelly sandwich. Well, shit, I have no bread. Okay, um, how can I make some semblance of what I want happen? Mm -hmm. I need this to happen. So uh, we had some honey buns, and I was like. Fuck it, I have no shame. <laughs> <laughs> I have no I have no interest in my health or concern for my well-being. I'm, I'm gonna finding... eat, I am gonna eat a honey bun and peanut butter <laughs> jelly sandwich. Dude, I'm finding especially as I like get older and my metabolism slows down and I'm gaining weight. The fucking when you start to lose shame, the world opens up to you and what you can eat. <laughs> yeah. You know, talk <laughs> day. Sure. Wait, uh, repeat that last one for me. Taco Bell twice in one day. Sure. Yeah, I've been there and done that. <laughs> well, um, I only had two soft tacos for lunch, so technically I could have two more and that's but, not that yeah, bad. And, yeah, it'll be fine. It's, it's just Mexican. <laughs> it's just Tex-Mex. <laughs> um other than that uh i got two of my computer parts up oh, for your new computer yeah yeah hold on okay so i got here my gtx uh, uh 1050 ti 1050 ti Nice. Yep. So this is the MSI version of the GeForce uh, GTX 1050 Ti. The Dual problem fans. with putting the problem with putting this online though is you're immediately it, our YouTube videos don't get that many views, like very very few views. Right. Really. Yeah. Somehow, like a magnet, like a fucking bat signal. The fact that you showed a graphics card that was MSI, yeah. you're gonna have. Nvidia people, you're gonna have GeForce people. You're they're just gonna flock to it like magnets. Suddenly, can, like bullshit card. <laughs> yeah, fuck you. This is you suck. You suck. Why are you using the MSI version? You should be using the Nvidia version. It's so much better. <laughs> the MSI the MSI version is just less expensive, right? Yeah, I think so. MSI is a little more budgety. That's what I have. Fucking, I have an Nvidia graphics card, but my motherboard and my chipsets and msi yeah yeah well, i don't I, think my chipset is but my motherboard is msi and i think msi makes good products yeah so do i i i think i think msi makes a quality product and that's that's i i have a couple of msi pieces too and they have never let me down so i figured 
fuck it, I'm I'm gonna roll with some MSI stuff. Uh, so this is a this is a four gig uh, DDR5. Um, 1050 Ti, uh, and the motherboard. I went with the MSI motherboard too, um, yeah. mostly because now I will say that I I have had ASUS as well, and mm. I like ASUS stuff. I have not had anything ASUS let me down either. I have my monitors and my current motherboard are both ASUS. Is so. it ASUS or Asus? Um, or does it matter? Potato, potato. Okay. Who cares? Who cares? Asus Fuck or him. Asus, yeah. So, um, but really, I figured, you know, I'm I'm building a new computer. I'm a little more savvy and a little more wary of just how things look. And I have a nice case with a, a large open plexiglass window. You know. Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna buy the parts that look good together as well as perform well. Yeah. So I mean if you're going to build a computer you might as well treat yourself. You might as well make it how you want it. Yeah. So like the first the first um when I was looking for um the graphics card cuz I'd already picked out the motherboard. So when I was looking for the graphics card, I went with the Nvidia card to start with cuz I just wanted a 10 1050 Ti, you know. Yeah. Um so that was the goal was to get that part from the technical standpoint and uh the msi one i think at the time was a little bit more expensive but it matched the motherboard and i was like well uh, fuck it let's go with a red theme <laughs> yeah <laughs> so here's the uh it's a z170a uh gaming msi motherboard okay it's very pretty yeah so um is that price in the corner what you paid for it? Uh no, it was less than that. Okay. Not I was going to say that's still a pretty good deal for a motherboard. It's I think it was like $177 I think is what it was. So I mean, I'm I'm still going kind of budget, you know. I'm not going all out, but it's still going to be leaps and bounds better than what I have now. Yeah. And I should And even that Like ahead. I think budget computers the term budget computer has dropped so much. Like you can go on YouTube now and find straight up, here's a budget build PC that will play X game at low settings for $500. Yeah. Your computer, I mean, if just your motherboard's like 170, I'm going to guess that graphics card was probably like 150 to 200, yeah. somewhere in there. Like your computer is probably going to top out at like six, $700, if not more. Yeah, I, I once think, you get everything, I think when I fully priced it, it was around a thousand dollars. Yeah, that's not a super budget PC. No, I mean, I know there's fucking beast PC Master Race people who are going to be like, if you're spending less than five grand on a PC, then yeah. you're a new blah, 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 whatever. It's, I, I would call <laughs> I would call what I'm building a lower to mid range PC. Yeah, you know, it's going to be it's going to be because here's the thing. I have been able to squeeze an incredible amount of um uh. <laughs> don't don't cut me off I'm already, <laughs> I'm already struggling with the word that I want anyway um power productivity Energy? productivity okay I've been able to squeeze an incredible amount of productivity out of my current PC that's running DDR2 RAM yeah that has eight gigs of DDR2 RAM. That's it. I have eight gigs of RAM. I'm running an AMD Phenom 2 um, X4965. You still have like a almost four gig processor though, don't you? I should be getting the screen share. Can you see the screen share? Yeah. Can you see my CPU? Uh-huh. Okay. I don't know why. Four cores, four threads. Phenom 2, X4, 965. Yeah. AM3 socket. Fan speed, bus speed, a bunch of stuff that doesn't really matter. <laughs> Four core. It's just running at 129 degrees. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's with the fan on. 
But yeah. I, I'll tell you what, I have topped this out. Let me uh, stop the screen share there, get back to normal. Um, I have topped this thing out at 150 degrees, and it still chugs along without thermal throttling that much. So, yeah. I mean, I have put this motherfucker through its paces, and it still, even though it aggravates the ever-loving hell out of me, it still just keeps chugging along, so... I am really happy with uh, with what with the life that I have gotten out of this PC, and I will send it off in a blaze of glory. <laughs> Are you going to give it a Viking funeral? No, I'm going to keep using it. <laughs> 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 It'll just move to a different room and 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 have a different set of tasks. That it's like it's going to become the the old man greeter at Walmart. Oh, okay. It's like he's semi retired, but he still wants to work. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that's that's what this is gonna be i've i've messed up the video entirely there we go <laughs> oh geez so uh sorry for for anybody who's watching the video and all the jumpy craziness that happened there but it I'm was totally not, normal on my end yeah i'm still not i'm st i'm i'm recording it through obs so i have all the scenes and stuff set up but the windows get a little janky. <laughs> so anyway, let's get on to the actual podcast. We've killed fucking 40 minutes of time already. <laughs> yeah, sorry. I wasn't trying to. I know I'm staring off. I was looking up to see what the like normal range of heat for a CPU would be before it gets damaged. And it's yeah. all in Celsius. It's all in that fucking alien temperatures. Like, ooh, Celsius. <laughs> ooh. So, uh, what, well, what was what was the Celsius? uh Apparently, it's all different by PCs. Yeah. Um, I'm seeing each CPU is different. They range from 90 to 110 Celsius okay. or more, depending on the CPU. So, I mean, we're smart guys, right? Yeah. Shouldn't, we, shouldn't we know the basic way to convert Fahrenheit to Celsius? Yeah, it's 230 degrees Celsius on the 110 side. Or 230 degrees Fahrenheit on the... On the on the high side, 110 is 230. Oh shit! So your computer's well within. Well, the parameters for that PC or for that uh, for that processor, um, you know the the software that it installs when like when you set up your computer and it goes through recognizing um, recognizing your parts, the 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 part will tell the computer what it's like max range is. So my computer will beep at me when it hits 150 degrees because it's like, Hey, this CPU is getting too hot. Yeah. So, but anyway, so I will go with the first story since we're on the topic of technology and things that are awesome already. Okay. I'll continue on with that. Okay. Remington, do you remember two years ago on this podcast, I came in excited, bright-eyed, bushy-tailed, still in my schoolgirl's school uniform, so excited. I dropped my little back, ringed backpack. I sat, hid my panties, and sat down to record and talked about how an American robotics company had challenged a Japanese robotics company to a, a giant robot fight. Yes. Yes. Megabots Incorporated challenged Suido Bashi, a Japanese robotics company, to a fight. Right. Yes. And it was supposed to happen six months from the day they announced it. Right. And then that date came and went. Right. And then Megabots started a Kickstarter because they didn't have enough money to build the robot. Right. And then people were like, man, Megabots, you guys were kind of full of shit. <laughs> well, Megabots yeah. just released two days ago a final video. The, they've been working this entire time on their Mark III final robot, okay. and they have set a date. This September, the giant robot fight is happening between the Megabots Mark III, which they've named Eagle Prime. Eagle Prime, and very nice. Sweet Obashi's Karatis robot. Karatis, however you would pronounce it in Japanese, I don't know. Probably Karatis. Happening this September at a secret location 
because you there won't be spectators there because the chance of somebody getting hurt is so high. Oh wow. That it's going to be closed. Now I kind of think that this thing is going to be edited. I don't think it's actually just going to be like, because they're going to release the video they sent on Facebook after right, the fight. Right. I feel like they're probably going to edit it. So neither one really wins because I guess they've been in negotiations for quite a while with Japan to find somewhere that is centrally located somewhere that both of them can ship their robots to physically Right. Um, a place that can support the weight of both of these giant robots fighting on the floor and just a lot of other stuff. Okay. So I think it might be edited and filmed like sort of a pro wrestling thing. Yeah. Because the guys who run Megabots, I read this big long interview with them. We can link it to it in our show notes. It was through, um, I read it down here. shit sorry <laughs> come on brandon now i have it pulled up i thought i wrote it actually down make scene m-a-k-e-z-i-n-e yeah dot com. Mm-hmm. <sighs> did this huge not just interview with them like they hung out with them for a few months right and wrote yeah. this big thing on them yeah um and expose so yeah, yeah is what it's so called. the two head guys are very open about the fact that their end goal is to create a giant robot fighting league. Yeah. What do you think they're actually going to have? Do you think that, I mean, if, if their concern is with safety, um, do you think that they're going to have projectiles? Oh yeah. No, you, can you watch the video? Yeah. You'll just you'll have to see the video. They released a, f- a final video of announcing the Mark III, and it's like a shadowy figure from behind talking into a microphone. That's like, "All right, Eagle Prime, let's put her through her paces." Yeah. And then there's a dude in the cockpit, and I mean, it's films like a movie, but you see this thing going through like the slalom, and yeah, it has like a giant cannon gun, and it's like wrecking cars and shooting barrels and shit. Slalom? As a can- yeah, like where you go back and forth. Slalom? Slalom? Slalom. Sh- Shabbat Slalom. It's Slalom. <laughs> I don't think it really fucking matters. <laughs> it was very... It was like, hey, we got Viscount wrong. <laughs> Let's not get Slalom wrong. Slalom. Slalom. Is that how you've heard it pronounced? I've never heard it pronounced. I've mm-hmm. only read it. Right. Slalom. <laughs> so it goes through the slalom and then (laughs) it has like the giant claw arm yeah and it rips off the face of the mark ii robot they built nice yeah that's really badass so i have some of the specs on it here it is 12 tons 16 feet tall it has two seats one seat for a pilot and one seat for a gunner it has swappable weapons so besides the gun you can also swap out for a chainsaw or a giant drill yeah, very nice. It cost about two and a half million dollars to make. It runs on Linux and Ubuntu. It has 14 waterproof high definition cameras all placed around it with a grid screen inside so the pilot can see everything around it. Right. Um, it has one mile of cabling connecting everything together. It has a 430 horsepower Corvette engine that powers it. It has a 35-foot wingspan, so with both arms completely extended, 35 feet, and from an arm fully extended to moving in front of its body, they've yeah. clocked it in under half a second. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. That is like, insane. The two main guys who are working together on this, one of them was a uh, robotics designer, and the other guy was a hydraulic professional. So they kind of moot worked their robotics versus hydraulics. Right, yeah. So some of the other stats I didn't write down because it was stuff I didn't quite understand. There was a lot of specs about how much hydraulic fluid was in it, how much PSI pressure it had, and stuff like that. Right. But yeah, both of its legs, it has two legs connected to tank treads. So it rides on tank treads. It can't walk. 
Right. But each of the legs moves independently. It's not one big unit. So you see it going through the slalom. Yes. Yes. Right. The slalom. You, see, you see it going through the slalom and they do it and they show it in slow motion and the thing fucking drifts like Tokyo drifts around a corner. Yeah. It like goes with the tank treads and then it like bends one leg to the side and shifts its weight and like around the corner. Oh, that sounds so badass. I need to it's see so this video. It's so fucking cool. Yeah, you need to see the video. Oh man. Can you pull it you pull it up? I don't think we'd get DMCA'd what? for that. Why why don't you pull it up and and screen share it? All right. So the video is four and a half minutes long. Okay. So we may if you're audio listening, we may cut out some of this. Yeah, I mean, if you're audio listening, um, you'll probably just see a cut or hear a cut, and we'll just jump into it. All right, you see my screen? Yep. Okay. Um, the audio for the video comes through my headphones, so I won't really be able to hear you talking much. Okay. Okay, I don't have uh, audio on your end, so, but that's okay. Okay, I'll just play it through. Yeah, just play it through. Basically, the guy's talking and he's like, all right, don't get too cocky, soldier. We just uploaded the latest Mark III firmware. We're really going to put her through her paces today. <laughs> they look so badass. I'll wait till you actually see it in action. Like, this is nothing. So the general basically, like, looking good. Free to stand. Yeah, I, I was just going to say that it looked a lot smaller than the Mark I. Oh, no. I stand corrected, and so does it. It stands erected, al- and I stand corrected. You're also missing some, like, hardcore techno-y music in the background, too. We have a few surprises for you today. Great drone shot. All right, now you've got some, like, cock rock playing in the background. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, it's incredibly maneuverable. Wow. Yeah, look how its legs move independently to shift its weight. Yeah. They can upload... They can... Yeah, that's what I'm talking about, the drift right there. Wow. (laughs) Bracing for impact. Yeah, look at that. Fucking puts its arm in front of it like a football player. (laughs) God, it's so fucking cool, right? Jeez. That's awesome. They estimate that this thing, they've been testing it at like 25 to 50% of its total power because they're afraid they'll blow out the hydraulics and hurt somebody. Right. They estimate with that claw arm, it can pick up a washing machine and throw it 75 to 80 feet. Wow. Look at those projectiles. Paintballs. Paintball projectiles. Massive paintball projectiles. See, that was a plastic barrel, and then look at the damage that it's doing to those 50-gallon metal ones. Yeah, this is a different kind of... That's a fucking fireball bullet. We need a different angle of that. Come on, Megabots. (laughs) Well done, Eagle Prime. Here's the coup de gras. He's one more objective to go. 
the showdown. That's the that's the old one, the yeah. Mark II. Yeah. <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> There's a little bit of spray in there. They'll probably have to take care of that. <laughs> Just the fucking power in that thing. It's crazy. Nice that's, work out there, Eagle Prime. Bring her home. That's awesome. That was awesome. Yeah. So they shared a screenshot on their Facebook page. Yeah. After that video came out, like a camera picture that somebody had taken. And it was like, here's what happens at Megabots Inc. And then they had in quotes, before we shoot that car, make sure we have the title in hand. And then another <laughs> and another quote from somebody else saying, I think it's still in the glove box. <laughs> and so you see like the Megabots robot like standing there and like a dude scrambling in through like the window of the car reaching in to get the title. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Yeah. So I'm more excited for that than I have ever been for anything in my entire life. Yeah, that looks that looks awesome. You're right that I was I was a little skeptical of the way that you sold the drift on that. I thought it was going to be a little bit more extreme, but at the same token, once he got the speed around that second corner, you ca you got that feeling. Yeah. So, so they're going to be doing this in September, hopefully. Right. Mm -hmm. Um in the meantime, apparently in May, China and Secret has been working on their own robot. So they challenged Megabots to a fight with their robot. Their robot's name translated is the Monkey King. Oh, that's so awesome. And their robot, like, full on has a man face. It looks like a Gundam style mech. Oh. <laughs> so there's no word. They want to be in this fight in a three way fight. Oh, yeah. So I don't know if that's going to happen. They haven't really said anything about it. I think a three-way fight might be too much. Yeah. And also China and Japan. I can see why China would make one because China and Japan are not so great of friends, really. Yeah, they, they, they've always had this kind of like. Yeah, I mean, what, hundreds and hundreds of years of history yeah. of them not not so much being great guys together. Yeah, right. Um, <laughs> I don't know why. They're both Asian. I mean, come on. <laughs> Really, dude? <laughs> I can't tell them apart. Mm. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> that's that's only funny because it's the same for Asians. Don't let them fool you. They can't tell whether somebody is Chinese versus Japanese as a rule either. Really? Yes. Do, what are you basing that off of? Uh, videos of Asian people saying that. <laughs> Oh, really? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> are these videos on like your uh, white supremacist sites, though? Because yeah, that's uh -huh. different. Mm -hmm. Oh, yep, OK. There are. you go. Yep. Yep. Go fuck yourself. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, seeing these videos now, do you think that giant robots fighting could be a sport? That's uh, the dumbest question I've ever asked because of fucking course it could. Yeah. Why did you even ask that? You're stupid for asking me. <laughs> One of the things they said is part of the reason why it's taken so long outside of getting everything working. Yeah. Is... Megabots and Suidobashi have been trying to figure out how to have this fight with pilots without somebody literally just dying. Dying, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because Japan in their initial response video to this said, yes, we'll do it, but we don't need all the guns. We want melee combat too. Right. So Megabots fucking delivered with that giant fucking claw arm that can rip apart cars and shit. Yeah. And, uh, the chainsaw and the giant drill that they can swap out. Yeah. They also have the ability to upload new firmware on the fly through cables. Oh, nice. Just like plug it in and like, oh shit, we're having a problem with the hydraulics. Boop, 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 boop. All right, we'll fix it. Yeah, that's cool. That is very, very awesome. 
and, and the final thing on the story, and I think this is just fucking adorable, is they've been showing these off at like big makers conventions, you yeah. know, like the maker movement. Our friend Cody is real big into it. Yeah. Um, how would you describe the maker movement, Ram? Um, honestly, I think it's just people who are passionate uh, about building and creating and and keeping certain things alive that could otherwise go by the wayside because we have so much technology to take it over. Uh huh. I think that's a huge part of the maker movement is, is still being able to get your hands in there and get, and get physical and, and visceral with it, you know? Yeah. And there's a lot of like DIY stuff too, right? Yeah. DIY re- repurposing things. Yeah. And repurposing and recycling and using one thing and something else. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's just, it's all of those things combined and so, so much more. So they had, they've been taking this to the Maker's Fair every year to show off, like, here's what we can do now. Yeah. So at the last one they did, they were showing off, like, the shooting of the cannons and stuff. And then their final moment was they had a Prius suspended from a crane and the robot just punched it apart. <laughs> That's awesome. And then at the end of it, senior electrical engineer Miles Pakala was driving it at the very end. Yeah. After he rips apart this Prius, like the Prius is still hanging there, but it's it's been pretty much ripped apart. Right. He moved the robot behind something, picked up something in its claw, dropped the robot to one knee, and proposed to his girlfriend from the mech with a 60-pound engagement ring. Just <laughs> held in its clawed hand. <laughs> and then he dropped it on her and she died. No, what apparently was supposed to happen <laughs> is he, he got the 60 pound engagement ring. It then was suspended from his hand. If mm-hmm. the girlfriend said yes, she was going to hit a button. It was going to drop the engagement ring and break the windshield of the Prius. <laughs> but apparently the hydraulics fucked up when it was on one knee. Like yeah. they couldn't get the hydraulics right. So that didn't happen. I got but you. still like, I love everything about this story. I love Megabots. I want to live with them and their robots. <laughs> right. Oh <laughs> uh, no, that is awesome. That is super awesome. That's a good technology story. Yeah. So let's move on to a little bit of science then. Okay. Uh, so NASA came out with, uh, there, there are two positions that exist when, when we sat down with the space race and started making all the rules and stuff for the space race, mm-hmm. you know? Um, so two positions in the world were created called the planetary protection officer. So there's only two of them. Just two. Okay. And they exist already? And they exist. Well, they are hiring a new planetary protection officer at NASA. Okay. Yeah, I've seen this posted. on A lot of people have been talking about it lately online. Yeah. Uh, the job pays between 124000 to 187000 a year. What the fuck? Yeah. Uh, it's open to U.S. nationals and U.S. citizens. Um, it's I, it's not as cool of a position per se as it sounds. Like, well, when people were sharing it, they were sharing it like they were hiring for somebody to be flying in a fucking jetpack with a laser gun right. killing aliens. Like here was here was my take on it. If I were the planetary protection officer, cameras on me now. It's just me. Okay. So I imagine me standing on top of the um, the wind tunnel test area. <laughs> Do you know what I'm talking about? Can you picture that in your head? Yeah, yeah. The wind tunnel test area, dressed up like Rambo. Still this physique, you know? Uh-huh. But I've got, you know, bandoliers of, of rounds strapped across my chest. And I've got like a huge 50 cal <laughs> in my hand. Maybe maybe a, a a what are those turret guns called? 
A minigun? Minigun, yeah. I, I forgot what they're called. Minigun held in the other. And I'm just looking up at the sky, and whenever I see a UFO or what I think is a UFO, <laughs> I'm just like... <laughs> Pretty much anything. You're just yeah, surrounded just with <laughs> dead birds. Birds. Private airplanes. Drones. Drones. Aliens. <laughs> pigs. So what exactly does the uh, pigs? Yeah, well, you know, pigs fly because oh, they're that's, flying now. Because yeah. that's the only way I'd have this job. <laughs> <laughs> what What do you? What are the requirements for the job? Does it um, say have to have killed one alien? It's it's multilateral discussions. Is, um, for like protecting us going into space, like uh the job requirements or the expectations are something akin to making sure that we don't contaminate uh outer planets if we land on them uh, okay that we don't bring back any contaminants that could be a potential hazard to mankind you know making sure that anything that is brought back or sent out is properly vetted in between um and negotiating these things you have to have uh, broad engineering expertise and and um social interaction expertise it's it's all over the place there's a lot of very um technical but also sh- but also social requirements to having this job uh, so you need to be like an actual scientist and stuff yeah you have to be kind of smart i guess man yeah it's a real bummer that, isn't it that rules us out but now that being said um a nine-year-old applied for the job okay and he 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 wrote them a letter uh dear nasa my name is jack davis and i would like to apply for the planetary protection officer job i may be nine but i think it would be but I think I would be fit for the job. One of the reasons is my sister says I am an alien. Also, I have seen almost all the space and alien movies I can see. I have also seen the show Marvel Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. and hope to see the movie Men in Black. I am <laughs> hope to hope to. <laughs> yeah, he's nine. So, you know, it's it's a little it's a little dangerous for him. Um, <laughs> I am great at video games. I am young, so I can learn to think like an alien. <laughs> Sincerely, Jack Davis, Guardian of the Galaxy, fourth grade. <laughs> so n- na- now here, here's here's the kicker. NASA replied to him. LOL. Yes. <laughs> just all they said. <laughs> just, just LOL. Um, LMAO. Love NASA. Let me see if I can actually get the letter to a point where I can read it. Uh Dear Jack, I hear you are a guardian of the galaxy and that you're interested in being NASA planetary protection officer. That's great. Our planetary protection officer position is really cool and is a very important work. It's about protecting Earth from tiny microbes where we bring back samples from the moon, uh, asteroids, and Mars. It's also about protecting other planets and moons from our germs as we respectfully explore the solar system. Uh, We are always looking for bright future scientists and engineers to help us. So I hope you will study hard and do well in school. We hope to have you at NASA one of these days. Sincerely, Dr. James L. Green, uh, director of planetary science division. So. And again, goes to like how weird the internet is. Yeah. In an age where like this kid can write this note and then it's online and NASA's official response is online. Yeah, yeah. And that's it's so awesome. Uh, I said respectfully explore the solar system, it's responsibly. Okay. So I'm I'm on their website right now, the Office of Planetary Protection. Yeah. And apparently their motto, their tagline is all of the planets all of the time. <laughs> that's nice which sounds like either an awesome lo- an awesome motto for the 
Office of Planetary Protection or the motto of somebody who has sex indiscriminately with planets. <laughs> <laughs> like some sort of super aroused Galactus. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All the planets. All of the planets. <laughs> All of the time. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> the silver surfer is just like don't make me watch again i don't wanna i don't want <laughs> <laughs> oh but no that's that's a super cute story um and and that position does sound incredibly awesome yeah so although less awesome than i expected i don't know what i expected i don't know why i expected somebody with a fucking laser gun yeah but I just got caught up in the hype. Yeah, you did. I mean, it, it's it's NASA. It's a bunch of nerds, okay? It's not mm-hmm. going to be... It's only going to be cool if that's the kind of thing that you're into, if that's the kind of thing that floats your boat, you know? NASA's filled with, like, hot 20-somethings, though. Like, yeah, there's a bunch of nerds, but there's some hot 20-somethings in there. There's some fit fucking bodies at NASA. <laughs> I, I, I guess you would know. You already work there, so... yeah. <laughs> I apply, I apply, I actually applied for that position. Yeah. And they said that I didn't look like I could rip the throat out of an alien. <laughs> well, valid argument. Yeah. Valid argument. Yeah. I, you just need, you need to do some more upper body. Yeah. I'm like, get, NASA, you, you, you nailed that one. There. Yeah. You nailed it. Yeah, I mean, I can't argue. Mentally, mentally, I'm there. Yeah. Physically, <laughs> it's, it's laughable at best. Yeah. I feel like laughable is a little strong, but I mean, you know, you know uh, tenuous, I would take, but laughable, laughable. Okay. So we're yeah. settling on laughable. Yep. That's what we're going with. Fair enough. Okay. And that's <laughs> why I'm not a planetary protection officer. Cause I back down so easily. That's right. You are. <laughs> if you were an alien, you'd fucking rule earth. Now you'd be, you, you'd sir, be king of earth. Are pusillanimous. Hmm. Laughable. Pusillanimous pusillanimous what's that remington Pusillan- your word of the day calendar this, what is pusillanimous this is, this is word of the day cal- calendar let's make sure i i pronounced it right <laughs> <laughs> you really use those ten dollar words huh yeah yep pusillanimous uh showing a lack of courage or determination or timid hmm. pusillanimous yeah that hit that really hits the nail on the head with me <laughs> Oh. I am I am pusilling everywhere. <laughs> if the aliens attacked, I would puce myself. <laughs> ah. Pow pow pow. Boom boom boom. Oh, oh it's good stuff. It's good stuff. Double fisted pun guns. Yeah. Pow pow. <laughs> oh. So another one of my stories, and this is a quick one I just wanted to get your opinion on. Although okay. it's it's a pretty heavy talk topic that we could talk about forever. We're we're, we're gonna... at an hour ten already. So yeah, I know. So I'm just gonna skim over it then. Okay. Uh, Peter Sund Sundy, the co-founder of Pirate Bay, in an interview with I don't remember what magazine. I didn't write it down. Okay. Says <laughs> that we have we have already lost the internet to capitalists, and there's no way for us to get it back. Yes. You agree with that? Yeah, I mean, especially with the, uh, you know, sooner or later they're gonna get the. Um, what is it? What is it that comes back every couple of years that w- the internet tries to strike down? The um, oh, I'm totally blanking. I know what you're I talking know. about. I'm I'm completely dead. Net ne- net neutrality, but yes. I don't remember the name of the bill. Yeah, so the net neutrality stuff, you know. It's going to pass through eventually. Exactly. I mean, if people, nobody who hears about it and genuinely understands what it is outside of people who stand to benefit financially from it yeah, actually wants it. Yeah. But it keeps coming up because they're going to shove it through because it makes money. Yeah, and, and that's that's all that it boils down to. And it's, it's our fault, you know. We let our politicians get into the pockets of these people and instead of the the problem is is that the people who make the laws are the ones who are benefiting from them yeah so so armed rebellion so i mean 
I don't want to say yes to that because I don't really want that to happen, but mm. I don't know what else we could do in order to, to get these laws back in the hands of the people instead of being in the hands of businesses. He referred to Mark Zuckerberg as a dictator that we give freely all of our information to. Yeah. And that, and that our government has access to all of the information that Mark Zuckerberg has. Yeah. Which is fucking true. I mean, I don't know if it's true a hundred percent, but I mean, the government can get pretty much whatever information they want, really, especially with how open our laws are and lax our laws are with allowing the agencies to talk to one another. Yeah, they don't need subpoena Mark's, information. Yeah, they don't need Mark Zuckerberg for that. You know, they, when he well, Mark Zuckerberg makes a shit ton of money off of this data. Like that's how he makes most of his money is by buying and selling this data that people upload freely to Facebook. Right. Like I didn't talk about it last week, but I had my Facebook hacked by somebody in Saudi Arabia. And right. what they did, what they did, and I guess this will be a lesson to anybody who might have a Facebook for quite a while. Cause I couldn't figure out exactly how they did it. Okay. When I first signed up for Facebook, I used a hotmail account. Yeah. Hotmail is now shut down and it's linked to Outlook. Because of that, I haven't been able to get into my Hotmail account in fucking years and years and years. At a certain point, if an email address isn't used, it's freed up just like a phone number would be. Oh, really? Yes. So what these people do who are getting this information is they find what you originally used. They find this list of like emails that are free. So they found my old Hotmail email address that's now free, put it into Facebook, did the I forgot my password thing, got my password sent to that Hotmail address that they now own because it was freed up, and then they went in and changed everything. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's how they do it, I guess. And then they got onto my Facebook, changed everything immediately to Arabic, Yeah. added, added a bunch of other Arabic Facebook users – and then tagged literally everybody on my Facebook friends list in one post. So then the people that they had just friended could go into my tagged friends list and just boom, 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 and copy everybody's information really quick. So oh, that's wow. how they do it is they, they gather information. So at some point, almost guaranteed, there's going to be a fake account of me with all of my, with my profile picture and all of my pictures I've saved that's going to show up and start sending friend requests to people on my friends list right. saying, Hey, that other Facebook isn't me. This is the real me. Add me as a friend and delete the other guy. Also, can you send me money? Yeah. That's how the scam, that's how the scam works. So I had to fucking navigate because I saw it. I saw that my Facebook had been taken over and I mean, I flipped out. I was almost ashamed at how I was like, Oh God, <laughs> but the thing was, it wasn't that I was losing my Facebook page, right. but it, it did make me aware. What, and I'm tying this together with him talking about all the information we have. Yeah. I've had fucking 10 years of pictures on there. Yeah. Like 10 years of life stories and stuff on there that would all be gone. Not only that, I have my PayPal account tied to my Gmail address. I have it tied to, or I have my Facebook tied to my Gmail, to my PayPal to the Dueling Ogres Facebook page, which in turn is connected to its own things. Yeah. I mean, somebody gets into my Facebook, they have access to so much shit. Yeah. So yeah, and whose fault is that? That's my fault, right? For allowing everything to be so interconnected. Yeah. And these companies thrive off of like, like we were talking on Facebook Messenger last night, right? And I made a joke about Christina Aguilera. Yeah. And then Messenger pops up and is like, hey, do you want to listen to Christina Aguilera yeah. through yeah. Spotify? I don't know. I don't know if anybody has seen this, but if you're talking to somebody and you mention a piece of music, Spotify fucking pops up and suggests that you listen to it. You said Sugar Ray and it popped up a Sugar Ray thing. And I said, fuck it. We'll just link it into the Messenger because that's what? What? That's yeah. madness. That's insanity. And I think so that's that, part of what he's so saying, too. Here's 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 the real fucking spooky thing there is an algorithm that is watching everything you say on messenger mm -hmm. and it is pulling information and suggesting things to you in real time yeah in real fucking time madness 
Oh, times pure and times that, madness. Times that we've been on like group chats and messenger before mm-hmm. to like play D and D or something, and I've said yeah, but I might see if I can get a ride. It fucking pops up, and it's like, did you want to request a ride from your friends? Did you want to call an Uber? It's fucking nuts. Yeah. And I mean, it's the convenience, and I know we've talked about this ad nauseum on the podcast before too, but it's the convenience of technology versus how much information you're giving away. Right. And we just, we have become okay with it. Yeah. And to a lot of people, they are okay with it. And companies have started to slowly figure out how are we going to make money from this? And money is, they get money from advertising, but the real fucking money the, where all of this real money is, is us. The yeah. money is in our data and selling, okay, uh, Brandon's a 32-year-old man and Brandon talks about Christina Aguilera with his friend and Brandon does a podcast and Brandon searches this and we can sell all this information and he has one kid and he has this income. And, yeah. But, you know, and that information just gets piecemealed out and sold over and over and over. Yeah. And now the question is, is, is this a bad thing like is this convenience is this interconnectedness ultimately a bad thing so or 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 to that end is it an invasion of privacy you know and to to the extent of like okay you're gonna pitch a christina aguilera song at me eh no i is is it weird Yes. Is it only weird because I'm not used to it? Because, you know, I'm with every day that goes by becoming more and more of an old man. Yes. Yeah. It's weird to me because of that. It's weird to me because technology is going to the point where my mind is blown by it, which I kind of like. Yeah. Because when I was younger and I was learning about all this technology, you know, we've talked about before that you and I were on the cusp of that change from um, from dialing out on a modem 56K to mm-hmm. high speed Internet through a cable yeah. provider or some other fashion T1 or whatever, you know? Yeah. So we were on this cusp of this change, this tonal change in technology uh, where we got to learn not just the back end on how things work because we, you and I especially wanted to manipulate that, you know, you and I both yeah. have hacked before, mm-hmm. you know, we've done these things in our past and because of that, we're, I, I would say that you and I are very hyper aware of this, um, invasion of privacy as we view it. But people who are younger than us, they don't see it as an invasion of privacy. They yeah, see it's it, the norm. It's not only is it the norm, but it's easy. They don't have to work for anything. They don't have to work to find it. It just pops up in their face right at the moment that they say it. And they're like, oh, yeah, I can get behind that. Boop, boop, boop. There it is. Yeah. Thanks, Facebook Messenger. I do want to listen to Christina Aguilera. Yeah. So... Is Christina Aguilera behind genie. all of this? This is a genie in a bottle, Brandon. And we're rubbing it the wrong way. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, guys. <laughs> but, I mean, so... I guess it really boils down to the question is, does your privacy matter as much as you think it does? Our privacy, I think, matters as much as we allow it to matter. And what this guy's – I didn't agree with a lot of what this guy was saying. Yeah. I mean because he was specifically going to how these companies are winning because people are getting in trouble for pirating and Pirate Bay gets shut down. We Pirating is a very gray area for me. I do it on movies and TV shows that I don't have access to or can't see or sometimes I just don't want to pay for. And, right. you know, debatably that makes me a shitty person. But it's illegal. And, like, should pirating of TV shows be illegal? Like, probably, you know, like they did, (laughs) they still created that TV show. Like, yeah, it's something they created and they have a means. It's like stealing. And I'm sure there's a lot of people that would disagree with me. Pirating is kind of stealing, but, you know, I don't feel that strongly enough to not do it. Right. But yeah, so I don't agree with a lot of what he said, but 
yeah, we are sacrificing a lot of things every day for convenience and it's beyond our control at this point. Yeah. Not to the point that we can't bring it back. I mean, we could always bring it back. Some EMPs and some fucking knives to people's throats will bring it back. <laughs> that so escalated it's never, quickly. It's never like, too we can, far. We could probably be okay with just the EMPs. Yeah. No, but, knives to people's throats too. You gotta, you gotta, you know, show them you mean business. You gotta, you gotta cut off the head of the Hydra. I don't know. I've been reading a lot of Shadowrun lately. I've been really getting into <laughs> cyberpunk. So yeah. I'm really on the like multi <laughs> mega corporations in the future where like the lower 90 percent lives in the slums and everybody fucking speaks korean and yeah i don't know shadow runs <laughs> a great system that's all of this story that's how i wrap it up shadow runs an awesome system <laughs> very good very and everybody good. should play shadow run <laughs> uh so we took a quick break and uh we're back had to make a little make a little stop to the to the little boy's room yeah i feel like you really don't need to fill people in on your bodily functions listen i do what i want this is my podcast as much as it is 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 yours i also took a nip off the bottle yeah apparently (laughs) (laughs) Um, i can otis the drunk (laughs) listen here brandon you don't tell me what to tell them i tell me what to tell them okay okay yep now you can spend an hour telling me about how your ex-girlfriend's a bitch. <laughs> um, so we've got a couple more stories real quick. Uh, well, a quick one and then a recap. Brandon promised you people that he would talk about the Ready Player One. So we're going to get to that right after this. Uh, I just wanted to say congratulations to you, Brandon, and uh, all of your fellow workers at NASA. Oh, thank you. Um, the Curiosity rover landed or the like first sent images back something like that on august 5th 2012 the curiosity rover so on august 5th it was the birthday the fifth birthday of the curiosity rover exploring mars yeah and he sings himself happy birthday every year which yep. is he sings, pretty sad he sings himself a little midi happy birthday song and uh it's it's sad we've talked about we talked about this last year um so yeah congratulations on you know the the amazing thing is that thing was not supposed to last as long as it has and it just yeah it keeps plugging along and you know arguably that's because we already have astronauts on mars that are cleaning off the solar panels but uh, it, it depends on what you believe right yeah (laughs) <laughs> that's why we really need a planetary protection officer curiosity right. saw something mm-hmm. so um that's all i had uh are you, you want to go ahead with uh, ready player one stuff then yeah so what did you think about the trailer the trailer i mean this is like two week old news at this point because this was at san diego comic-con right you've never read the book i've read the book right so what did you think of the trailer from an outsider's point of view so here's here's the bad news brandon i didn't watch the ready player one trailer why because i forgot (laughs) oh okay i i can appreciate your honesty and the fact that you didn't make up some bullshit like you didn't tell me to watch the trailer brandon (laughs) you tell me to watch the thing we were specifically fucking talking about but that being said i mean i haven't i haven't read the book like you said um, so I think that, uh, it's fair to just let you go on your, uh, merry way with it and, uh, and give us a rundown of what you thought and what your, uh, first impressions are. Well, I mean, ideally it's a podcast where we discuss things. We could have a discussion on it, but well, you know, uh, yeah, um, I, ideally, I I mean, I, uh, you know, I don't like talking to you. Okay. So the trailer from what I've seen online from people who've read the book seems to be more positive than negative. A lot of people who haven't read the book are commenting on the trailer like, you know, your typical mixed response. This looks really cool or like this looks like another Tron ripoff, blah, blah, blah. stuff. Right. right. But generally seems positive. Like in the opening scenes of the trailer, you see him crawling into where he has his uh, Oasis machine where he connects into the virtual reality world. Mm -hmm. And it looks spot on like the description of the book. 
Oh, that's cool. It's where he lives is a bunch of trailers that are basically stacked on top of each other and people climb up to their houses. So he, he lives in a very poor house. Gotcha. So you see that, you see him get into the Oasis and then it's just basically a barrage of different pop culture references. Right. Just like the book is. And I've talked before about how I liked the book, but I also thought it was a little like <laughs> fart noise if the mic didn't pick that up. Yeah, yeah, totally. It, it just, it felt a little pandering. It felt like it was a fun read. I mean, when I read it, I read it in like two days. I just barreled through it. But there were literally points in the book where I was like, Jesus Christ, just get fucking on with the story. Yeah. Like he's just, Ernest Klein crams in every pop culture reference in the existence of pop culture ever. <laughs> gotcha. And for me, the fun of that wore off after a while when he's, when there's something major going on in the story and then he spends 10 pages describing everybody's sweet car from this 1970s movie you've probably never heard of. Right. Mixed with a Gundam arm and blah, blah, blah. So whatever. But, so in the trailer, there's a bunch of different scenes. At one point, you see one of the people walking with the Iron Giant. Yeah. Yeah, you yeah. see, I, I have, do. I do remember that because I saw bits and pieces. Okay, I mean it's like a fucking two minute trailer. How'd you well, see maybe, bits and pieces? Maybe, maybe I watched it and I just don't remember everything that happened in it. How about that? Okay, I like that better. Okay, but I do remember um, the Iron Giant theme scene because I'm like, oh wait, that's the fucking Iron Giant. Yeah, so and I, I think, have. I think that I forget sometimes that Ready Player One is by and large about. Uh, all of the pop culture references. So I, whenever I saw the Iron Giant, I was like, that's weird. Why is the Iron Giant? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I got lost in the movie. <laughs> well, and that's the thing about Ready Player One is that's what it's known for is the references. The story underneath Ready Player One is really cool. And that's why the references crammed in there bothered me so much because the references make the book. Yeah. But they they pulled away from the actual story, I felt, a lot, towards the end, right. especially. Gotcha. So when you're finally getting to the climax, the crux of the story, and then you're, you're wanting, you're anticipating, you're wanting everything to, to work out or go however it's going to go, and you want to know what's going to happen, and there's another goddamn reference to some bullshit that you don't care about. Well, like, without giving any spoilers, because I think people should read the book. It is a good book. Yeah. And the movie, the movie definitely from the trailer is going to not follow the story completely. I mean, yeah. it has to cram this big book into, like, what, two hours, maybe. There's going to be a lot of stuff they gloss over. Yeah. But one of the bigger scenes towards the end of the book is a giant battle. And everybody has giant machines that they're fighting with. Yeah. So the battle fucking slows to a crawl as he describes everybody's goddamn mech. And it's always like he drove the Iron Giant, but he had the oil drill from this 1980s movie on his arm. Right. And he had the license plate said Ecto-1. And then there was an X-Wing in the background with a T-Rex flying it. So like, here's, here's the cool thing about this, though, is that because all of these are just he's writing visual references – yeah. Now we don't have to worry about that. Now we can just see the visual references. They can just be what they are. Yeah. So, I mean, that really, that takes all of the references that are visual references and just squishes it all down. So this is the writing. This is what you'll actually see in the movie. So it's the the movie you'll probably get a better sense of the story from the movie than you will the book if they follow it yeah i just hope that the movie doesn't do what i feel like the book did which is rely very heavily on the references yeah i think um, i think if uh, I, i'm like i said i think if a lot of them are visual references i don't think we'll have a whole lot to worry about but some of the references in this i have this pulled up off of screen rants they did mm -hmm. a list of them yeah. Um, his and these are things that are actually in the movie. So he has a DeLorean, mm -hmm. which is his vehicle that he gets around with. Right. It's and it's the Back to the Future DeLorean. At one point, he's walking into a nightclub, and in this world, you pick your avatar and you can look like whatever you want. 
Right. So he's walking into a nightclub, and in the background, you see Deathstroke and Harley Quinn walking out. Uh, the Iron Giant, of course, is DeLorean. Uh, there's a big battle scene that you see, and at one point, just lightly in the background, you see the ostriches from Joust with like the Joust pilots on top <laughs> nice, yeah. fighting a giant scorpion. <laughs> In the battle scene, you see Duke Nukem fighting Freddy Krueger. Yeah. And then there's a big thing. Uh, Laura Croft is in there. There's a big thing with Tom Sawyer. Like, in the trailer, it's Tom Sawyer from Rush playing. Right, right? yeah. So, yeah. yeah. And that Rush plays a very, very big part in the book. Yeah. So, I know when we first talked about the movie being announced, I was unsure about how they were going to get the rights to all of these references. Right. But apparently they did because Rush, Tom Sawyer's in there, which I mean, one of the worlds, if they do this, one of the worlds is based off of a cover of a Rush album. Right. And it's like one of the big culminating battles is in this world. Yeah. That's, I mean, that's really awesome. And uh, apart from the bigger things, I think that, Anything that wouldn't make it in would be almost a stupid move on whoever owned the rights to it. You know what I mean? Because when you have when you have this kind of hodgepodge reference to um, cultural things in our in, in our proper universe. Um, when a movie does something like that, where it's pulling different things in, like Roger Rabbit. Uh, who framed Roger Rabbit, which had Disney characters and um, and Warner Brothers characters and and all the Fleischer characters and stuff like that? Um, it's cool when that th- kind of a thing can come together, and it's equally awesome that the companies who own these properties are willing to say, "Yeah, go ahead and just just let it happen." Yeah, you know. Yeah, if they were to. I'm guessing a lot of these properties were owned by subsidiary companies of the main company putting this out. Yeah. And that's how they were able to just use them for free. Yeah. Oh, I'm sure there wasn't use for free. I'm sure that they paid something to make it happen. But that being said, you know, um, depending on the studio, the studio might actually own most of the rights to most of the things that were in there. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Like the major studio itself, might just own secondary studios oh, okay. that have these properties you. that they're just like, hey, we own smaller studio that made Freddy Krueger, so we're just going to use Freddy Krueger and not pay anything. Cause yeah. We- yeah, because another fart noise with the mouth. Yeah. Exactly. Oh, well, like one of the things, you see the DeLorean in the movie, in the book, his DeLorean's license plate is Ecto-1. Yeah. In the movie, it it doesn't. So they didn't get the rights to Ghostbusters stuff. I gotcha. But that's also an example of the shit I'm talking about. I'm just cramming references on top of references. Yeah. It's the fucking DeLorean from Back to the Future, but he he makes a point to talk about how he his license plate says Ecto One. Right. Like, do you really, okay? Do you really need that? <laughs> I don't know. I sound like I'm shitting on the book, and it is a good book. It's just people talk about it like it's the fucking second coming of sci-fi in this book that everybody has to read. And it's yeah. just basically given a blow job to your nostalgia <laughs> for good and bad for good and bad. I mean, it's good to get your nostalgia blown every once in a while, but it hits a certain point where it's like, it's sensitive now, leave it alone. <laughs> I've had enough. Oh, thank you for that. Um, just kind of along this vein, um, I'm going to do <laughs> a real, don't I'm, talk about veins after the, <laughs> Hmm. <laughs> valid valid um along that line of conversation uh-huh. mm, um i did a show with uh jesse starcher over at source material and uh with ronnie adams where we did a commentary of the film kung fury which came out in 2015 um it was a crowdfunded thing for those of you who know what i'm talking about great Go over and listen to our commentary and uh, watch it. I will uh, put a link down in the description as soon as he launches it. But by the time this episode comes out, it will have launched, I'm sure. Okay. Um, so Is it going to be synced with the movie? Yes. So you're, Or do you have to find the movie yourself? You, you can find the movie for free on YouTube. Uh, just go to Laser Unicorn's 
um, YouTube channel. Yes. Thank you. I forgot what words okay. were for a second. Uh, go over <laughs> to the laser unicorns, YouTube channel that the movie is available and free. That's, that is his YouTube channel. Um, David San Sandberg is, it was the creator of the movie. And, um, you can watch it there and watch it with us and listen to our commentary as we go along. Uh, I had a lot of fun doing it. So there's that. Awesome. And, and, and the reason why I felt like it was a good place to drop in that little plug is because Kung Fury is, is very much a, an ode to like all of the eighties tropes of movies. It's yeah. like eighties sci-fi bad one liners. You've got, uh, an overly powerful good guy fighting the uber bad guy that is Hitler. Really? So, yeah, he's fighting Hitler. So you have you have a a a lone he's a loner cop, and they assign him a partner, and he lost his previous partner who got cut in half by a ninja. <laughs> yeah, I mean it's and his new partner is a triceratop cop named, is he an actual triceratops named triceracop mm -hmm. and this is definitely something i gotta check out yeah. i've never heard of this movie before yeah you absolutely need to get checked mainly out. because i wasn't invited so i didn't I yeah um i didn't i didn't want to sully the 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 good feels that we had going on here with your brash negativity <laughs> <laughs> Which is why I wasn't invited, probably. Yeah, yeah. Um, this movie sucks. <laughs> this movie sucks. You guys suck. Why did you even invite me? <laughs> no, but you, you'll sh you you would have loved it, and I I figured that you were working. That's the only reason why I didn't even throw it at you. He dropped a, he dropped it on me like uh like five o'clock the same day that he wanted to do it, and I didn't even see it until like six thirty. Yeah. And no, I was, I'm just giving you shit. I know, I know. But the I mean, I, I wasn't even sure if I was going to be able to do it. And I just I, I feel like I was able to squeeze it in. So you spread your wings a little bit. You went off on your own I and you know. saw that you can do it too. Rem. Yeah. And you've got some stuff coming up. Yeah, I'm going to announce it once it's out. I'm okay. going to share it uh, because I don't know exactly when. But yeah, I've been I've appeared on another podcast and I probably will continue to do some appearances on there. So once it actually gets out, I'll I'll share it on the Facebook page and then probably talk about it on here. Okay. Once Sounds it's good. out. I want to wait till it's actually published yeah. in case the girl that I was on there with decides this whole episode sucks. I'm getting rid of it and never contact me <laughs> again. Fair enough. Because I can be a little chatty. <laughs> <laughs> you are a chatty Kathy. I am. <laughs> okay. So um, do we have anything else about um, Ready Player One that you wanted to wrap up with or are we good? No, although if we're going to get into the Facebook page and leaving comments and stuff, mm -hmm. if you have any comments on Ready Player One, pop in there because Remington hasn't read it and couldn't even be bothered to watch a fucking two minute trailer. So if anybody who has read it or watched the trailer wants to talk about it and bring up points, I'd love to discuss it with somebody else who has read it. Gotcha. <laughs> so leave uh, us your comments on yeah. this YouTube video or yeah. Facebook or yeah. Twitter or anywhere else. Yeah. Um, and, uh, Real quick reminder that August the 21st, uh, we will have a solar eclipse. I, I'm pretty excited about that. I figure once we get a little closer to it, I'll talk about it a little bit more. But I just wanted to drop that quick reminder to everybody. Yeah. And uh, otherwise, I think we are done with this podcast. Yeah, I think so. All right. So if you have any questions or comments or you'd like to hear yourself on air, you can call us at 978-DU-OGRES. That's 978-386-4737. Uh, you can also reach us on Twitter. Email us at duelingogres at gmail.com or leave a, leave, oh, uh, uh, leave a comment on the Facebook page. Uh, Brandon, did we uh, get some shout outs? Uh, we had quite a few comments, actually, on our last episode. Good. Jordan Lowe of the Kapow Pop Culture podcast. Yes corrected uh, us on a few pedantic nerd things we got wrong uh, according to him pedantic nerd things yes yeah. uh you got the scrolls mixed up with the kree right that wasn't me that was all you so yep, you can take the blame me. for that I mean, one you, did, you didn't correct me either but uh you know so go I, fuck yourself on that one 
fair enough, fair enough. <laughs> uh, the Skrulls are green shapeshifters with squiggly chins and haven't been seen on screen yet. They drive the Secret Invasion storyline. Lots of folks are hoping to see as the post-Thanos movies where they've been hidden on Earth for decades, manipulating things. The Kree are blue. Right. Uh, also, he corrected me because I talked about Rob Liefeld uh all of his marvel stuff was straight work for hire he's been on both sides of these debates when a later writer revealed his creation's shatterstar was gay rob liefeld did not show the same level-headed wait and see approach though to his credit he has chilled out and walked back his statement in the years since that's in reference to rob liefeld when they made domino a black lady and people were angry about it saying wait and see domino i think looks cool right. apparently he was not so okay with shatterstar being made gay yeah. Earlier. And then we had a back and forth about X-Force and stuff. Uh, Terry W. Irvin the second, Viscount Terry W. Irvin the second, said that he can see that poor fellow in India or wherever, the guy that kept calling me after I set up cheat in a top hat.net. <laughs> right, yeah. Having to keep switching phones and punch in Brandon's number 33 times until he finally gets through and Brandon basically tells him, dude, you just wasted 30 minutes of your life. Oh, and so much for making minimum quota of customer buy-in of services. Bet you're fired by the end of the day. Goodbye. Yeah. I appreciate that Terry thinks I'm that eloquent. <laughs> right. <laughs> That's not so much how the conversation went. Yeah. <laughs> and then Terry also shared another picture. He, it's amazing how he keeps finding these pictures on the internet. I know. Of famous I, people wearing dueling ogres clothing. I did not know that we were so popular. And and here's yeah. the here's the problem that I have with this, Brandon, is that the cheetah in the top hat, the the reference that you're getting ready to talk about, um, all of these are unlicensed use of our logo. And I would appreciate it if the cheetah and the next person would pay us royalties. Yeah. Just saying. Uh, it's a cast photo from Riverdale. It seems mm -hmm. like a promo photo. And yeah. Archie is wearing a, a Dueling Ogres sports jacket. Yeah. Yeah. So that's 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 the thing. And like I said, I, I you know, I expect a little bit of royalties out of that. I mean, he said he doesn't understand Dueling Ogres general disregard for Riverdale. It seems you're snubbing solid supporters. That's because they're using our logo unerrantly. All willy nilly. Free publicity, though, really. Yeah, any publicity is good publicity, I guess. Exactly. That's what they say. Uh, we also <laughs> had um, not necessarily comments on the last episode over on Twitter, but uh, you know, we we are only six hundred or six hundred six likes at the time, and now we're only four likes away from three hundred on our Facebook, and that got populated over to the Twitter because they're both connected. Because uh -huh. I'm, I'm lazy and I want to make sure that our stuff gets shared. So I just copy and paste, basically. Yeah. Um, so uh, we had we had a commenter say, uh, Andrew, one at Andrew, one, eight, three. I'm not much for Facebook, but I can give you some love. And um, I checked I checked out his. Uh, his Twitter page and he's from Ireland. So shout oh, out okay. to our so shout out to our Irish listener. I said, thanks, Andrew. I promise to stay away from the terrible Irish accent that I do dot 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 after this episode dot 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 because it's already committed <laughs> <laughs> and he said no Thank keep, god he said no keep it up don't change a thing so i won't i won't i'll keep doing my shitty irish accent and everybody can go fuck themselves <laughs> perfect <laughs> it's like i'm fucking staring straight into the emerald isle <laughs> that's right um speaking of the emerald isle uh we got a a um an article from Larry, uh, he created a, he won a contest on a different podcast that he listens to. Uh, he listens to a different podcast than us? Well, I mean, it, you know, you listen to a lot of different podcasts, Brandon. I, I don't want to hear you bitch, okay? There will be no bitching from you, sir. All right, continue. All right, so... Uh, Larry's wanna... really fallen out of favor with me, I gotta say. <laughs> Don't worry, Larry. I'm still your friend, and I'm the better friend anyway. And you edit it, so you can make me say all kinds of stuff. <laughs> That's right. You're, I'm you... gay for Remington. You what? Are, you are my puppet, Brandon Full. <laughs> Remington, I want to kiss your body. Remington, stop it. Why are you editing me saying these things? <laughs> all right, so uh, speaking of the Emerald Isle, I had That was to... a really good segue, by the yeah, way, I thank, have to say. Thank you. Um... He won this contest on this different podcast, and this podcaster happens to be a um, board game creator. 
Okay. Or a game creator. He's an indie game creator. Uh, so he helped Larry come up with a simple two page board game about the land of Oz. So uh, you can go over and check out his article, read it on our website, duelinggogers.com. Uh, make sure to subscribe on the website for more news and articles. I have somebody else who is getting ready to write for us. And Ooh. she is super, super excited to be doing so. So I'm hoping to see something from her soon. Awesome. Um, she doesn't <laughs> she doesn't really listen to the podcast, she said, but yeah, she, cool. OK, she watches a lot of YouTube. <laughs> so I said, well, we're on YouTube now, so you can go over and do it there. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so go over to our website, duelinguggers.com. Subscribe so you can get updates for news and all of that stuff. Uh, be sure to leave a five star Review on iTunes for us or tune in on YouTube, iHeartRadio, Satchel, wherever you can find the show. Um, buy a shirt because I think I'm going to put the main logo ones on sale and I'm going to put up the other one very soon. So okay. just just watch out for that because it'll happen soon, probably in the next month. Okay. Okay. Let's If you're not 100% on it, let's wait so we can coincide it with when the episode releases. Yeah. No. So like when you when you decide you want to put the no. logo on sale and put no. the new shirt up? No. no. Why? I'll, that's I'll, a great That's will, a great idea. Will, if 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 we can get to 300 likes, I'll make it happen a hell of a lot faster. How about that? Boom. 300 Fucking likes. Sold. There sold. we go. Just four of you. Four of you have to go like the Facebook page. That's right. Four of you. Only four. So, uh I think that's it. Anything else, Brandon? Nope. I am good to go. Great. So until next week, ogres, keep your clubs blunt and your tusks sharp. Good, Good night. night. <laughs> <laughs> I my, I blanked there. Yeah, I'm. I'm, I'm yeah. Good it's, it's a, it's to a thing. go. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Uh, good stuff. <laughs>